You? Is anybody? There's Molly, folks. That means your friends, the Goldbergs, are here. Brought to you by Does, the new kind of soap for everything in your wash. First, let's drop in on the Dozem family. Mmm, Ma Dozem's in the kitchen. And here comes Unky Dozem, all excited. Say, Ma, Ma, while I was hanging up your washing just now, along comes that snooty Mrs. Vandemore. Goodness, what she want? Well, she put them fancy glasses up to her eyes and says, My good man, did you do that magnificent-looking wash? She did? Yeah, and I says, My good woman does did everything. And guess what, Ma? She didn't even know what does is. Hmm, hope you told her. Yeah, sure. I says, really, Mrs. Vandemore, you astound me. Does is a new kind of soap for everything. Work clothes, towels, to pretty rayon panties. what she say? She says, you mean Does is the only soap you use to get those work shirts so clean? You bet, I says. Does gets tough dirt out all by itself. You don't even need a bar soap anymore. Did you tell her there's no hard scrubbing either? No soap I ever used gets clothes clean easier than does. Sure. Then I showed her them dazzling white towels, and she looked as if she couldn't believe her eyes. I've always said you can't beat does for really white washes. Yep. And when she saw Daisy's pretty rayon doodads, she says, You mean with all that tremendous cleaning power, this does washes those nice colors too? Did you tell her that's the wonder of does? It's actually safer for the delicate colors I wash. Sure did, Ma. Then she looked at me and says, My good man, you seem to be an expert. Could I get you to wash for me? What'd you say? Well, I said, gosh, no. But you can get does. Does will do everything. Honky dozens, right. Why, compared to other leading granulated wash day soaps, does gives longer life to colors, plus unsurpassed whiteness and real cleaning power for the dirtiest clothes. Better try does, D-U-Z. It does everything in your wash. And now the Goldbergs. In a swift maneuver, Molly's daughter-in-law stalked out of the Goldberg house, leaving the Goldbergs confused and unhappy, feeling guilty for driving out Sammy's wife. The check, which was the visible proof that Grace was out to get money from the Goldbergs, has apparently been torn up. On the other hand, Grace was triumphant, for she tore up not the check, but a useless piece of paper. And she and George left, Grace with the intention of getting to New York and cashing in on her little scheme. So in the end, it appears as if this strange girl that Sammy married has won out on all points, and the Goldbergs have lost. Listen. Jake, Rosalind. Maybe I, I better go to the station, I think. Sit. You won't make it, Ma. Uh, but maybe I will. Maybe the train will be late. When you want the train to be late, it's always early. So what time is it? Ma, please, Grace didn't want you at the station. But if there's so time, why shouldn't there I? There isn't. Not to even know where she's going to be and where she's living. Well, you asked her, Ma. You couldn't do more than that. She'll be all alone. She'll be with her sister, Ma. Family we failed. Nobody else, only family. Sammy sent his wife to us, and look what we did. You were wonderful to Grace, But Ma. you were not. I'm sorry. It's too late to be sorry. Who should know? Who should know what a chain of circumstantial evidence can do to your mind? Who should know? Jake, darling, you can't say when Grace first came, my eyes and my arms was open for her. No, darling. No. I'm asking an interrogation. No, even when Rosalie, darling, you remember, even when Rosalie came to me and said, Mama, look, look, Mama, darling, two letters from the same place mailed on the same day. What did I say? W w what did I say? I, I said coincidence, no? I said coincidental coincidence, no? And then when she told me about her sister, when her sister was in terrific trouble and needed money, was there a question when it came to help, huh? Then what happened? And then everything, I don't know. Every, everything got twisted in my mind. I mean, George calling every day. All the things I pushed away from my mind came back like, like, I don't know, how should I say it, like snapshots when you're in a dark room and you're developing pictures. I saw everything clearly. And I was sure I was right. I was sure I was right until, until Grace took the check and tore it up in my face. And then I wasn't so sure. The telephone. 
Oh, let it ring. We don't want to talk to anybody and now. Answers, Rosalind. May may maybe it's Grace. Maybe she's changing her mind and she's coming back. Take it, Rosalind. Take it, Mum and you. Hello. Yes, Rosalie? Yes. Yes, what, darling? It's Grace. Molly, will you subside? Well, just a minute. I asked you who. It's Bruce Hanley. Oh. You said yes, I was. Well, you, you, you don't have to talk to him, Ma. Huh? I don't have to talk to him. All right, so I'll talk to him. Give me. Give him. me. Hello? Hello? Ye yes, Bruce? How are you, Mr. Hanley? I'm, I'm fine. We're feeling very well. Yes, and how's Mary? Mm-hmm. That's good. Yes? Oh. Yes, uh, Masha told me that George left. He's not working there, but... But it's my opinion that George is leaving Lastonbury. What does he want, Ma? All right, Bruce. Thank you. But my, my tomatoes? Well, uh, how big is my tomatoes? Oh, hang up already. Uh, well, all my vegetables are well. I, I hope yours are likewise. It leaves us. <laughs> yes, Bruce. Thank you. If I hear of somebody, a handyman, yes, I will inform you. Come over sometime. Yes. Goodbye. You heard George left Marsh and he wanted to know if, if George would come and work for him for a spell. And I thought maybe Grace changed him. Oh, the train. Too late. Too late, Jake. The train. The train. The train, Grace is taking the train. Why are you stopping the car, George? I'll never make that train. You will. How? It's at the station now. You'll make it tomorrow. You're turning. Why? We have a little unfinished business. Get your hands off the wheel. George, where are you going? Where are you taking me? We have some money that doesn't belong to us. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What happened to you? You getting religion? Maybe. Well, giving the Goldbergs back their money won't wipe out all the rotten things you've done in your life. Maybe not. You bet it won't. Sit still. You know what this means, don't you? We're through. Okay, then. We're through. Are you crazy? Are you losing your mind? Don't you see what this check will do for us? Yeah. Yeah, I see. Nothing can happen to us. The Goldbergs won't think of stopping the check. They think I tore it up. It's nearly $2,000, George. It'll give us a few things. We'll get an apartment with an extra room. We'll furnish it in blue and white and pink. And, or all white, if you like that better. We'll have enough to keep us for a while until the baby's born and longer, and, and then you can get a job. George. George. George, if this was our first try at this, I could see why you'd be scared, but it I'm isn't... not scared for us alone. I'm scared for that kid. Up to now, it was you and me. Maybe if you had been scared for me and me for you, we... We wouldn't be a couple of small-time thieves, petty crooks, heels, nothing. What's petty about $2,000? The way we did it was small-time. The way we think and act is small time. The way we hope for things is small time. And it's dirty small time, too. We walked in on the Goldbergs, and we started to take them over. But they're not just sticks and stones. They're people. They loved you. Don't forget it. And you, you gave them the big talk. You gave them the high drama, and you tore them down, and you got the kids' college money, and you made an exit. Oh, how can we go off and, and live like this, Grace? What can we do? What can we say to each other? Well, it certainly looks like Mrs. Goldberg's converted you to the I love humanity crowd. Don't try to make yourself tougher than you are. You're as small and scared and frightened as I am. Talk for yourself, not me. I'm talking for both of us. I keep thinking back. My mind keeps going back, and I, I can't figure how we ever got started on this racket. Wait, we, we must have gone crazy. We didn't go crazy. It wasn't our fault. We tried to make a go of things, and we got pushed around, and we got shoved around, and we got all we could take. The world was no friend of ours. Maybe we wanted things and didn't want to pay the price for Why it. Why should we pay the price? Why should we be blackmailed by the smug opinions of people who happen to be stronger than we are? We weren't strong, George. We were weak. You're right. The strong animals can fight back with their claws. But the weak ones have got to be smart. We had to be cunning and clever. We had to know how to run and hide, and we learned. We learned the lesson well, and now we've won. Sure. Sure we've won. That's the whole hypocrisy of it. Who do we win against? What big, strong, terrible giant do we beat down, huh? Tell me. Mrs. Goldberg, a, a plain, simple woman. That's who. 
We took advantage of someone weaker than ourselves. That's the way we fought back. Well, if they'd caught us, you'd see how strong they were. Maybe we would. And for what? Some petty cash? Oh. No, 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 no. You're all wrong, Grace. You know, you're, you're blind and crazy, thinking you can live not caring a hang about anyone else in this whole world but your own self. And you? Me? No, you... You can't care for me. I'm just part of the trap. Stop it. Get your hands off the wheel. Don't drive up to the Goldberg house, George. Please, just drive up away. Let's talk. Don't be crazy. I'm not being crazy. I'm being sane. I'm beginning to think and see clearly. Getting the words you spoke out of my brain. Beginning to see how wrong you were. How wrong I was. How wrong we were. You're... You're living in a dream world, Grace. You think you can treat the whole world bad and stay good yourself. You're, you're the one who's crazy. They see the car, George. George, stop here. Don't drive up to the house, George. Get your hands off the wheel. We're through, George. Do you hear? If you do this, we're through. You mean we're all through if we don't? Don't drive up to the house, George. Get your George, hands off the wheel. George, don't. Grace, Grace, stop it. What are you doing? Oh, Grace! Get your hands off! A sudden hysteria seized Grace at the prospect of facing Molly again. And now, perhaps... She has climaxed her whole life in this terrible moment. You know, a listener told me the 15 minutes she spends with us each day are always worthwhile. She also mentioned she's taken quite a fancy to Pa Dozum. Well, he is quite a guy. You know, Pa Dozum said... Yep, Ma's the real boss at our house. But even she admits Does is head man in the dishpan. Well, no wonder, Pa. Does does everything in the wash and has everything for dishes, too. This new kind of soap makes suds that stand up till the last dish is done. Cuts grease like 60, yet it's kind of the hand. Yes, does leaves hands feeling nice and smooth. You see, it's safer than any other leading granulated wash day soap. And notice how those does suds stand up. You don't have to keep adding soap. And does cuts tough grease in less than half a minute. Try does. It has everything for dishes. And friends, when you're dozing dishes, remember, don't waste does. All soaps contain vitally needed war materials. So don't wash a few dishes. Wait till you have a pan full. See to it, every bit of does you use does more. Be sure to listen to the next episode of The Goldbergs. The Goldbergs face their own crash of feelings. This is Clayton Collier speaking for Procter & Gamble and saying, do as the dozens do. Let does, the new kind of soap, do everything in your wash.